In life, we are always searching for the shortest path, the smallest effort to reach our target. Geometry Notes got that feature now too. And even though not a lot of information on how it works internally got revealed, we can make really cool patterns with it, and we can reach a tip of the potential of the shortest path notes. So, here we are now in the newest Blender 3.4 Alpha. It's highly experimental, you can download it via the Blender website or the Blender launcher. When you download it, you are ready to go. As said in the intro, I'm not be able to explain fully how the new nodes work in Geometry Nodes. Uh, it's because they are very new and there's not that much information about them out there. And they're looking quite complex, but not worry. I can show you today in this tutorial how you can make cool patterns with it anyway. And I can show you a little bit the logic behind this. So let's get started. At first, we will be starting with the plane. Then we can go into geometry nodes and I can show you the new nodes. Click on new to create a new node tree. With shift A, we can add new nodes. Then um, two new nodes are in the mesh submenu and the other one, I'm not quite sure where it is, are here. So edge path to curves is new, edge path to selection is new and shortest edge path is new. So the edge path to curves node and the edge path to selection and the shortest edge paths. Those are the three new nodes we will be using today. So this one we don't even use today. So what we want, I will go into edit mode and I will subdivide this sum. So we want to create a vertex group. I will select only the outer edge here and I will be going into the object data properties and I will create a new vertex group. I will assign our edge loop here because I want geometry nodes grows us edge paths along here so we can have nice patterns. I will go out of edit mode and I will be using the edge path to curves node. Here's the short um, explanation of this node that I found on developer.blender.org. So the edge path to curves takes a field of next vertices and outputs the selected paths as curve splines. So this is what this node does. As said, I'm not really understanding it, but we can create nice things with it and that's enough. And then we have the shortest edge paths node. We will connect the next vertex index into the next vertex index of the edge paths to curves node. And so this node basically um, finds the shortest edge paths and this node then converts it to the curve. So that's how I understand it. So the explanation of developer.blender.org of this node, shortest edge paths uses Dijkras algorithm with a priority queue implementation to output a field of indices to the next vertex. This is what this node does. We can then define our end vertex which is our vertexes that we have stored in the, ver uh, in the vertex group where we want to have the grow from and we can just drag them in to the end vertex and we want to have this as the vertex group and now we can see it's already growing the shortest path. It's already drawing the shortest path. So at the moment it's very boring but it does what it what it should because it's a very it's a completely flat plane and so the shortest path is just straight how we how can we fix this we can displace our our plane and 
then the shortest edge path node has to find new ways in the plane to grow. So how can we displace? We can set another position and I will be using noise texture, noise texture like this. And I won't plug it into the offset. I want to have a combine X, Y, Z node first. So I can only use the Z axis like this. And now we can see it's still stripes. And this because something is missing, we have to also define the edge cost. And now this is something um, you have to remember. As said, I can't really explain it to you, but we will need a edge vertices node, then a vector math node, and we will extract the distance of our position one of the vertices and position two of the vertices. And we will use that in the edge cost. And now it works. Now it finds the shortest path throughout our terrain. This is a nice pattern on its own. But right now we have here our vertex group and now it's growing the edges exactly on those edges here. And we don't quite want that. So one edge grows like that. Another one grows one further. Another one grows like that. So they're all overlapping. And another effect we can use is to resample our curves. And with that, we can break them up a little bit like this. And then you can just play around with the uh, point count. And we can also we can subdivide it so we have more resolution on our curve like this. And then we can use a color ramp. I'll set the resolution one down because of recording. And I will crop the noise texture a little bit. And like this, we can have really nice patterns. Maybe scale it a bit down. And this way you can have really nice growing effects. But of right now, this is just still, but we want to animate it. So we can trim our curves with a trim curve node like this. And we can then change the start. And like this, we can animate it as you can see here. And you can just play around with this setup. So even without the resample curve node, if you have enough resolution, what does make the shortest edge effect, just this node, this node, this node, and this node. And we have an end vertex um, defined here as our vertex group. So this was the first effect I wanted to show you. Let me delete it. And now we want to use a three dimensional object like an icosphere. And I want to create a geometry nodes tree. Now I can put, for instance, first I'll subdivide it. And now I want to have this vertex as to grow our edges from. So I'll assign a vertex group to it. And now we do just the same thing. We search, we, we search for edge. We want to convert the edge path to our curves. And we want to use the shortest edge path node index to index. And we want to define the end, which is for us the start. But <laughs> And now it works. But we also want to be to let it behave a little bit better. So we want to have the distance of position one and position two of our vertices. And we want to use this as edge edge core cost. Now it looks like this. And to have a nice effect, I will be using a resample curve node. Now they are growing here from the top. And they're going downwards 
until they end here on the bottom. You can of course also join our icosphere back in like this and we of course also want to give our curves a little thickness by converting them to a mesh and I'll define a profile curve like this resolution of 3 now if we want to have materials on them we can create for instance two materials one I call Amy for emission and I'll drag the emission a bit up so we have an emissive material and then I will be using a set material node on our curves and one on the sphere here and this should be the emissive material and this the normal and if you would go into rendered mode you can see it works and of course we can let them grow with a trim curves node right after the resample curves node and now it's n you have a nice growing effect if you animate this and of right now it's very symmetrical but we don't quite want that though we will be displacing this thing a little bit so it's not symmetrical anymore with a set position node and just with a white texture node, a white noise node and a vector math node to define the strength at the scale and of course we have to subtract 0.5 to reset it back to the middle oh I'll have to swap these and now we have nice growing effects here now because we have displaced the whole thing so we can transform the whole thing a little bit so it's not intersecting like this so set the scale a bit down and now it looks like that we can also go into cycles so here it should look a little bit better and if we now want to have the length of this thing in our shader nodes to define the color we can use the spline parameter node and we have to capture it before we converted the curves to a mesh because only then the information for our length of the curve is there so we capture it and we output it out of geometry nodes and I will define it as length like this and then I'll go into the shader editor into my emission material and I'll add an attribute called length and now we can see we have the length of our, of our curves and I'll drag it into the emission and I'll use a color ramp to define here our colors and so you can use it also in the shading and now if you animate it you have really nice animations like this so I think this was a short overview <laughs> very short um, about those two notes here um, I hope more information about these will um, will go to the surface soon um, I hope it wasn't too rushed because um, I have to go somewhere um, soon so I have not that much time to explain here uh, a lot I hope it was I hope you've learned something though and I hope you saw how much potential is in um, those two small notes and how cool how much cool things you can do with this it's, it's incredible um, I think I will be uh, experimenting with it more and if you want to support me um, you can go uh, on my Gumroad um, there's my uh, online shop you can 
use my material pack or my hair grooming system and otherwise um, I wish you a great weekend and um, thank you all for watching and hopefully see you later. Thank you. <laughs>